Now, you may think you've never heard of the new Genesis GV80, but this is indirectly one of the most famous cars of 2021 because it was the car that Tiger Woods had that rather nasty accident in. And if you're thinking, oh dear, I better not buy one of those then. Well, consider this. LA police estimate that Tiger was traveling between 84 and 87 miles an hour when he left the road and he hit a tree and flipped several times. So the fact he survived at all owes a lot to how safe this car is. In this video, we're going to be finding out what makes it so safe, but also how it compares against its other key rivals, the Audi Q7 and BMW X5 in important areas and whether or not it's worth its near £57,000 starting price. But before we get to all that, we should probably start with a bit of background on Genesis, the brand, because if you're watching this in the UK at least, you probably won't know a great deal about it. So in essence, Genesis is the premium arm of Hyundai, a bit like DS is to Citroen. It was launched back in 2015 in its native South Korea and in 2017 in the US, but it's only just arrived in the UK. And I'm gonna be frank, there's no guarantee that will end well. You see, here in the UK, buyers tend to be a bit snobby when it comes to badges. They're happy to spend loads of money on a BMW, a Mercedes, an Audi, or a Porsche, but not so much on a brand that has next to no history. Nissan tried it with Infiniti, and well, that didn't go very well at all. And the jury is still very much out on DS. In fact, the only nouveau premium brand that's enjoyed some proper success over here in recent years is Tesla. And that's largely because, certainly in its early years, it offered something completely different that you couldn't get from any of the more established premium brands. So is there anything completely new about the GV80 that would make you consider buying one instead of a BMW X5? Well, the look is new, obviously, but it does appear to have been inspired by a certain British brand. So this enormous diamond effect grille at the front here is very Bentley, isn't it? And this badge as well. I know several manufacturers have wing-based logos like Aston Martin and Chrysler, but this one does look very similar to Bentley's. And that's probably not a coincidence because a couple of former prominent Bentley designers have actually joined Genesis. There are some original touches though, like these quad headlights and double line indicators that are repeated on the front wing. So they almost look as though they've been threaded through the wheel arch. But we want to know what you think. Does the GV80 look better than its rivals, the Audi Q7, BMW X5, and even Volvo XC90? Let us know in the comments below. Under the bonnet, you'll find either a two and a half litre petrol with 300 brake horsepower or a three litre diesel with 274 bhp. So it's a bit of a surprise there's no hybrid or electric option, especially given Hyundai's experience in that area. But Genesis will be launching several pure electric models in the near future. The only other Genesis model you can buy right now is this G80 Saloon. It's a rival to the BMW 5 Series and you can find out loads more about it by clicking the link up there at the top of the screen and heading over to our website. But back to the GV80, and let's take a look inside. And it's actually a really pleasant surprise in here. Now, admittedly, this is quite a high spec version. It costs around £73,000 and one of the options it has are these Nappa leather seats. But everything else looks and feels pretty upmarket and nice and solid and I particularly like this steering wheel which again is rather like a Bentley's. Storage space is a bit more of a mixed bag so you've got a nice big cubby here under the central armrest and you've also got a couple of cup holders covered here and a sliding tray that's useful for stowing your phone or something like that but the door pockets they are quite small and the glove box we won't fit much in there at all. It's also nice to see some proper user-friendly physical controls for the air conditioning, leaving the touchscreen, which by the way is huge, measuring 14.5 inches for the infotainment stuff like music and navigation. The screen is a bit of a reach if your driving position involves sliding the seat back a long way, but you don't actually need to press the screen at all because there's another controller between the front seats. This works in pretty much the same way as a first generation iPod from 2001. Remember those? because you circle your finger to spin a scroll wheel and then press a button in the middle to make a selection. It isn't quite as intuitive as the iDrive controller in a BMW X5, but it's far less distracting than swiping and pressing a touchscreen while you're trying to drive. All GV80s come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring as standard with wireless phone charging and a 12.3 inch head-up display available as part of the optional innovation pack. 
And one other option you might want to consider adding is this rather awesome 18 speaker Lexicon sound system. As for rear space, there isn't quite as much legroom as there is in a Q7, but still plenty for a couple of six footers. And if you pay extra for the second row comfort seat pack, you get full electric adjustment, so you can fold, slide, or recline the seats simply by pressing buttons. An extra 500 pounds gets you a couple more seats in the boot, and these are handy as long as you aren't hoping to carry adults on a regular basis because headroom is rather tight. Have a watch of our reviews of the Land Rover Discovery and BMW X7 if you need an SUV that can comfortably ferry around seven grown-ups. With all seven seats up in the GV80, there's barely any space left for luggage, but if you fold the rearmost seats away into the floor, something that can be done electrically if you've stumped up for the second and third row comfort seat pack, there's a very decent sized boot. Now, all GV80s come with an eight-speed automatic gearbox or four-wheel drive as standard, but I'm driving the diesel version here, and certainly when it comes to performance, no complaints at all, really. Acceleration is perfectly adequate, and it's also quite smooth for a diesel. Ride comfort, well, that isn't quite so successful. So unlike many of its closest rivals, including the Q7 and X5, the GV80 isn't available with air suspension. And when air suspension is done well, it gives you a really soft, pillowy, and generally luxurious ride that's really appropriate for a car like this. The GV80 does have quite a clever system that this car is fitted with. So essentially it's a camera that can read the road ahead and prime the suspension for speed bumps and potholes and things like that. But if I'm honest, it doesn't seem to work very well because if you hit something like a pothole, there's quite a nasty thwack through the car and you also jostled around quite a lot at low speeds as well. It goes around corners perfectly well and actually makes cars like the Land Rover Discovery, for example, feel quite cumbersome. The only thing I'd say is that when you're driving a little bit harder along a country road like I am now, the steering could do with a little bit more weight buildup to give you confidence as you turn into corners. And that's something that you do get, more so at least from cars like Q7 and X5. But really, when you're driving this car gently as luxury SUV buyers will be most of the time, absolutely fine. And while we're on the subject of the steering wheel, I know I said earlier on that I really like the way it looks and feels, and I do, but as I've been driving it more, I've noticed that there's quite a nasty bit of hard scratchy plastic here in the center that your hands inevitably end up finding when you're going around corners. And if I'm honest, that does slightly spoil the luxury experience. And on top of that, at all speeds, you are aware of quite a lot of road noise making its way into the car. Now that's probably not helped by the fact this car has 22 inch alloys. They are the largest that are available on the GV80, but there's no doubt about it that if comfort and refinement are your priorities, then there are better alternatives than the GV80. So what about price? Well, the GV80 starts at just under £57,000, about the same as an Audi Q7 and a few thousand quid less than the BMW X5. And you do get a lot of equipment as standard, including fully electric and heated front seats, adaptive cruise control, parking sensors at either end of the car, a reversing camera, and even electric steering wheel adjustment. There's loads of safety kit too, including 10 airbags, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and lane keeping assistance. All of that stuff helped the GV80 score five stars out of five in its recent Euro NCAP safety appraisal with excellent marks awarded for both child and adult occupant protection. Buying a Genesis is also likely to be a different sales experience than you've had before. And I emphasize the word sales because if you don't want to buy online, you'll need to go to a Genesis studio. The first one in the UK will be opening in London very soon. Here, you'll be allocated a personal assistant to help you along your buying journey. But that assistant won't get any commission if you decide to go ahead. They're paid a salary, so you hopefully won't experience any hard sell tactics or find yourself being talked into a more expensive model than you really need. So should you buy a GV80? Well, it really depends what you're looking for. As I said earlier, it has some pretty major strengths, safety being one of them, and also, particularly when you factor in standard equipment, it is cheaper than most premium alternatives. On top of that, Genesis says it's prioritizing customer service, so you're likely to be treated like a king every time you go to get your car serviced. However, if you want something that offers you really top-notch comfort and refinement, and is also genuinely a practical seven-seater, there are better alternatives. And this car isn't 
likely to hold on to its value as well as some of the more established premium brands, simply because not many people in the UK have really heard of Genesis before. But for lots more information about the GV80, just head over to our website, whatcar.com, and read our detailed four-point review. Whatcar.com is also the place to get a great deal on your next car. If you've enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you give it a like, leave us a comment below, and other than that, we'll see you next time.